Adventures, and welcome to episode 20 of Books Cubed. I uh, do not have anybody with me today, so uh, it's just me. I am um, recovering from my cochlear implant surgery. I had planned on having a few extra shows in the can, and I kind of um, got distracted by things and just kind of didn't ever get it done. Well, I had one extra one, and I used that last week. So uh, I'm just going to um, make it a short show today because I am um, a little unbalanced still. I'm doing pretty well, but uh, I did a lot of stuff today and uh, I'm feeling the need to take a nap or something or go to bed early. Uh, so uh, that's kind of been my life um, since the surgery. Had the surgery, I think it was the 28th, and they did this ear, the right ear. And uh, it was, um, let's see, the 28th. Yeah, they did it on the 28th. And then I sat in the couch for three days, I think. This time I didn't have a lot of nausea. Last time when they did the left ear, I couldn't even move without needing to throw up. It was really, really bad. And this time when I went in for surgery, I told myself, uh, it's not going to hurt and I'm not going to be nauseous. And yeah, it did hurt some, but not as much as the first one. And I was just not really as nauseous as long as I just kind of uh, stayed off my feet and um, crouched down instead of bending over. And I'm still doing that, uh, getting a lot of squats in. I'm a runner, so I really should be doing a lot more squats than I am. Um, God, it's even a horrible word, squat. It's a horrible exercise. It's a horrible word. Oh, exercise. Jeez, I don't even want to think about exercise. Okay, I'm getting distracted here. So uh, anyway, so my surgery uh, went well, and um, I uh, swing by my doctor's on Friday, and she's going to probably take off the bandage in the back there and uh, give me the all clear to fly. I'm going to visit my kid in Seattle in a few weeks, so I'm excited about that, and I want to get the all clear to fly. So uh, today I'm just going to be doing a... Just, oh, uh, and I've got um, my book, How to Sex Your Snake, A June Nash Misadventure, has a new cover coming out very soon, probably in a couple weeks. So I will be giving away a couple paperbacks. So keep tuning into the podcast to find out um, when you could possibly win a paperback for the new cover. New cover looks fantastic. So I cannot wait to share with everybody. So just keep listening and... Um, uh, you'll hear about that as soon as um, as soon as it's ready. Let's see. Uh, I just want to talk about a couple books this week um, that I found that I absolutely loved. But this one, the first one is uh, probably one that a few of you have already read. I'm probably behind the times on this because I think it came out in 2011. There's four books in this series, but I just found the first one. It's called Post Apocalyptic Nomadic Warriors: A Duck and Cover Adventure post-apocalyptic series, book one by Benjamin Wallace. And I was on Facebook, and I'm rarely on Facebook. I go about once a week to check my um, reader group because I like the people there. I mean, not that I don't like other people on Facebook, but tends to be a lot of stuff I don't want to, I'm not interested in. So uh, I, I go about once a week, and I was scrolling down and this um, ad came up for this book. And on the cover, it's uh, kind of, um, it's got red letters and it's got a distant city you can see in the background. And there's a lot of um, dust and it's uh, post-apocalyptic looking, of course. And there's a, you can see a 18-wheeler um, uh, in the back, way against near the city. And there's a, a military boot and he's, he's, his foot is lifting up and there's gum stuck to the bottom of the shoe. And I just thought that was great. So I clicked on the first ad I've ever clicked on on Facebook, first one ever. And it took me to this book and I read the description and I uh, got a sample. And I was going to just listen to it. I was just going to read it. And then I realized that he had an audio book. And so I downloaded the audio because I had some, I had a credit for that month that I had not used yet. So I got the uh, audio book and <laughs> have you ever heard or watched the Honey Badger videos? If you have, this is not the same guy, but it reminded me of the guy 
the way that he did did the audio is just very similar. So um, I will have links in the show notes to this book and to the audio book. I highly recommend you listen to a sample and that you buy the book. Um, audio book, they're a little expensive, but if you have um, a credit, you know, you can use it as your credit. And they have the first three books in the series are all bundled together. So you can get three books for the price of one as an audio book. Uh, or you can get the Kindle for $2.99. But let me read the description here. The post I try that again. The post-apocalyptic world isn't that bad. Sure, there are mutants, but for the people of New Hope, daily life isn't so much a struggle of finding food or medicine as it is trying to find a new shortstop for the kickball team. This makes it difficult for a post-apocalyptic warrior to find work. Thankfully. An army full of killers is making its way to the peaceful town and plans to raise it to the ground. Only a fully trained, post-apocalyptic nomadic warrior can stop them. Two have offered their services. One is invited to help. The other is sent to roam the, will the wasteland. Did the townspeople make the right decision? Will they be saved? Did they find their shortstop? What's with all the bears? Find out in Post-Apocalyptic Nomadic Warriors, a fast-paced action-adventure novel set in a horrific future that doesn't take itself too seriously. It's the end of the world as you've never known it. And uh, it's um, obviously there's humor in the book. It is, um, it is really funny. And I, you know, it's the, oh, let me see, let me find here, hang on. It's the old um, laugh out loud. Yes, I, I did a lot. And I found myself um, driving and listening to the book and then taking the long way home so I can continue listening to a chapter or uh, taking my dog for an extra walk during the day so I could listen, finish listening to a chapter or listen to an additional chapter. It, um, even if you are not a post-apocalyptic uh, reader, <laughs> I started to say warrior, if you are, uh, if you're not even, if you don't read post-apocalyptic fiction, I recommend that you read this series, at least the first one. It, uh, it's really funny and it moves very quickly and they are great fleshed out characters that uh, you will really, really enjoy getting to know. The librarian is the main character. Uh, Jerry, the librarian, is the main character of this book. And there's some other characters sprinkled in. And I really don't want to go into too many details because I don't want to give anything away. You need to discover it as you're listening to the book or reading the book. So uh, I, I recommend drop down to the show notes and, uh, and, and click on the link and um, check out this book and, and maybe get a copy of it. It, um, it is really, really worth it. Uh, as soon as the, I think I have to wait until the 10th to get my next credit on Audible, but I will be getting his next book um, on Audible. And uh, I, I cannot wait. I'm going to be listening to it as I um, head cross country. I'm trying to get back to, I want to talk about the other book real quick. It was one of the one that I've just started reading. I have not gotten very far. I'm like in the first chapter, but so far it's, it's humorous again. And so far uh, it's pretty funny. So we will I'll see if it if it holds that. Hopefully it does. I, I'm always uh, excited when I can find a book that um, that first chapter. So often that first chapter is just so good, and then you get into the book and it just kind of wanders, or it just loses its train of thought, and all of a sudden you're bored and you put it down and you never pick it up again. And I have so many books on my brand new Kindle Paperwhite, which I'm so excited to finally have. Uh, I have so many on here that I read like five chapters and then I never went back to them again. And it's a lot of money that I've invested in these books. So that kind of distresses me because uh, I will read the uh, sample and a lot of times the sample is good. So I'll go ahead and pick up the book and then it falls apart a couple chapters later which is a shame. Uh, re uh, authors, please, please, please professionally edit your books. Most of these indie books are, are getting so much better. It used to be that uh, so many weren't. But in the last few years, last five, six, seven years, they're just 
all these great books out there. You don't have to go to Barnes and Noble uh, or, or buy from the big publishing houses to get a good quality story anymore. So I'm going to, this one, like I said, I'm just in the first chapter and so far it's, it's really funny. So this one is called Star Spangled Apocalypse. And this one is by Harmon Cooper and it is free for Kindle Unlimited, uh, $4.99 to buy. Let me see how many pages it is. Oh, let's scroll down here. It is 341 pages. Uh, the Post-Apocalyptic Warrior, I forgot to look at that for you. That one was $2.99, and it doesn't want to scroll quickly here. Come on, come on. That is um, $2.99, and it's 244 pages. And it was first published in 2011. So, okay, so back to the second book we're talking about, which is Star Spangled Apocalypse. Um, the ebook is, like I said, uh, 341 pages, and it is $4.99. There's an audiobook, and there's also a paperback for $11.99. So um, here is the description. Assuming the fiery attack of the Russians on Austin, Texas, is the start of Armageddon, James, an East Texas good old boy with a drinking problem, and Virgil, a drugged-out yogi, set out on an adventure across America to save James's long-lost son. Along the way, James and Virgil form a bipartisan relationship stitched together by mutual self-destruction as they encounter a series of angels and demons who force the former co-workers to come face-to-face -face with their folly, its impending results, and the burgeoning doom that lies ahead. Uh, and then there's a warning that there's adult situations and mockery of right-wing media figures, celebrity angels who dress like rappers, heavy drinking, drug and hallucinogen usage, paranormal encounters, <coughs> excuse me, sword and gun violence, crazy Texans, theft, suggested suicide, general blasphemy, and a, take, a talking cat named Arjuna. Arjuna. If you like Kirk Vonnegut, Kurt Vonnegut, Stephen King, oh, Chuck, I can't pronounce your name because I don't have my new glasses and the print is really small. Uh, American Gods and Stephen Colbert's satire, you will love this twisted urban fantasy from Amazon's best-selling author, Harmon Cooper. Okay, so like I said, I had just started reading that one. So uh, if you finish it before I do, uh, drop down to the show notes. If in the show notes, there's a link, if you're listening on the podcast, there's a link in the show notes to take you to the podcast homepage so that I can find your comments because people are commenting in different locations wherever you get your podcasts and I don't always see them and then I, I'll have someone say to me, well, how come you didn't respond to my comment? Sorry, didn't see it. So if you want me to respond to your comment, drop down in the show notes and click on the podcast link. And if you read either of these books, please tell me what you thought, especially post-apocalyptic nomadic warrior. Uh, just so, so funny. He had like 20 books, probably not that many though. Let me go back to Benjamin's page. He had a lot of books. Let me go scroll up here. Boy, my computer's moving really slow. He has got, um, let's see. Uh, he's got a book called Tales of the Apocalypse. He's got a series called Junkers. And um, what else? He's got the four duck and cover books. And that might be it. Probably could click on his name and I could tell you more. Um, no, come on, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Let's see. Let's click on his name and take a peek and see what he's got on his page. Uh, junkers. And... Um, Something called Dad versus the Grocery Store. <laughs> That's a great title. Um, something, oh, a fantasy series. Oh, he's, uh, he wrote in a fantasy series, so he's part of an anthology. So if you like fantasy, uh, he's there too. He's got another one called Giving the Bird to Indie Authors Guide to Twitter, okay? And um, uh, let's see. Dads versus Zombies. Oh, that's great. Dads versus the World. That's great. And then um, Damien Stockwell, Horror in Honduras. So 
horror and post-apocalyptic looks to be his um his uh genre there so um if you like that kind of stuff i highly recommend you go check out his page i'll have a link in the show notes there and um let me get back here okay so um let's see what else what else what else um well uh, i think that's about it i uh, don't have too much interesting going on in my life i'm going out to seattle to visit one of my kids so i will be driving cross country and i will probably do at least one show from the road so uh, i'll try to include for the youtube page some photos but every time i say that i always forget to overlay photos i was supposed to overlay a photo of um ft lucan's book in last week's show because she held her she held um, the bookmark up we didn't have a copy of her book and i was trying to show it off my phone and it's a red and white cover and so it kind of um blurred out uh as i tried to hold it up by the uh, computer so I was going to overlay a picture uh, for the YouTube people who are watching. And, um, oh, I completely forgot. And I even had a note on my wall. So, I, in fact, I looked at the note and thought, what the hell does that mean? And ignored it. So uh, that was not good. Anyway, so I'll try to remember that, but I'll probably forget. And um, that's, this is a short show this week. Uh, oh, uh, as usual, I, oh, I think I've asked a couple times, if you find indie books that you enjoy, please uh, leave a comment in the show notes and let me know what you are reading. I'm always looking for interesting and really good indie books to feature on the show so I can chat with indie, more indie authors. So let me know if you are an indie author with a really good, interesting book. Put the link to your book in below in, in the show notes and tell me what it's about. I can't guarantee I will read it. Uh, but I will um, at least check out the uh, free sample on um, on uh, Amazon, which is where I get most of my books. And let's see, I think that's about it. Uh, oh, I know there's all kinds of other interesting things to tell you this week, and uh, I can't remember what any of them are. And uh, I, I, oh, I saw what did I see. I went to the <laughs> went to the movies and saw Aquaman. Finally, I had not seen it yet <laughs> at all usually i go and i go to the movies when something new comes out i go see it right away almost doesn't matter what it is i, I like pretty much anything I, um we used to live in tucson and the loft theater there and it's probably still just as great but the programmer for the loft was amazing and the foreign films that that they brought in were just spectacular always something wonderful so i could go uh, with my youngest on a friday and we would just show up and get tickets to whatever was showing in the loft. They had a loft upstairs and uh, there were um, couches in the front, couches and chairs in the front, one or two rows, I can't remember now, and then regular theater seats behind that. So we would try to get there early so we could get one of the couches to sit on. Just more comfortable theater seats are just super uncomfortable. I was so happy that most theaters have gone to these reclining seats. It makes going to the movies so much, so much better. So we would go to the loft and uh, just whatever they were showing. And if you were in the Tucson area, I just recommend just, it's probably the same programmer, probably. <laughs> Don't take my word for it, but maybe. And uh, they just, whatever was showing, whatever foreign film they had in the upstairs little theater was always, always great. Uh, what was some of the things we saw in the band played on? No, not the band played. Oh, no, no, not the band played on. Um, the band's visit. Uh, that was really good. Uh, we saw The Host, which is a Korean horror film. Really, really good. Um, gosh, so, so many other ones that I'm terrible with names. I can't remember any of the other names. But um, anyway, so uh, I am rambling now. And um, anybody who is still listening, uh, thank you for hanging on with me, and um, I will have uh, something wonderfully interesting for next week. I have no idea what yet. Something really wonderfully interesting. So come on back, and, and maybe my uh, cover will be up, and I'll be giving away paperbacks. I don't know. Uh, it could be next week. could be the week after. So you'll just have to come back to find out. Uh, let's see. Uh, I guess that's it. 
So, oh, there was something else I was going to say, and I, I just can't think of what it was. Nope, that's it. I'm done rambling. And um, go out, read, and oh, oh, I know what it was. Um, this is a great week to ask for this since I'm rambling and making no sense and had nobody to talk to this week. Uh, but if you are on your computer, on your phone, can you scroll down and give me some star love? Uh, I'm still waiting for someone to leave us some stars for the show, which will be lovely. We've had lots of wonderful comments, but no one has left um, any stars for the podcast yet. So if you could do that, thank you so much. Uh, on YouTube, you can subscribe um, and, uh, and leave a comment. Much easier. Um, but like I said, for the podcast, all you have to do is go down to the show notes and click on the um, comment link, and it will take you to the page for this, and you can comment. But um, instead of commenting this week, just leave us some love, us, me. Leave me some star love um, on whatever podcast uh, app that you happen to listen on. And thank you if you can do that for me. And uh, I will see you next week. And in the meantime, go read a good book. Mm -hmm.